now that we have the motherboard and all the pieces in place and the motherboard, the CPU and the RAM and everything else, we can start mounting this into the case. My case is modular, so the case is uh, tray slid out, so it allows me to do this installation and show it to you easier. Uh, the motherboard came with this, all motherboards will come with a piece to that lays out and describes what's in the uh, on the motherboard itself as far as the pieces that will be sticking out that you'll be able to access. So we got to put this in first. And sometimes this is a small pain in the butt to get in. It should hopefully snap in place. Still not 100% in. Yeah. Okay, now I think we're good. Once this is in place, then you can lay your motherboard into the tray itself if you if yours is modular or you're gonna have to deal with screwing it into the actual board itself or the, the case itself and that can get a little hairy as far as getting access into a small space but the great thing about this being modular once again is that I can just take my board and stick it in here without worrying about the rest of the case so well, let's do that next okay the next step in this process is getting the motherboard into the case tray so we're gonna use the screws that came with the case and getting the motherboard lined up with everything sometimes a bit of a pain. Hopefully it'll align okay without a problem. Sometimes it's just a matter of lifting and shoving to get things where they're supposed to be. Oh. Not quite going the way I want it to in there. With this particular case, there's a small hole or a small pin that will help align everything. There we go. Now that that's popped out, the motherboard sits properly on all the posts and we can screw the screws into the posts that are sitting there. electric screwdriver would help and be a little faster unfortunately I don't have one on hand which isn't a big deal because these are very small screws anyway Oops. doesn't stop me from being a klutz anymore though oh, there's no post in that spot no big deal Not every hole on the motherboard is going to have a post under it. Uh, that depends on your case design and configuration. It doesn't really need it. Generally, you're going to only screw in three or four of these anyway. Also, not every case is going to have this little stand here. That's a nice addition to this so I can get this aligned easier. Uh, unfortunately, this last guy is having a hard time going in. But in general, you get the idea. And next we'll show you how to actually put everything in and attach everything. Okay, now we're going to look at connecting the motherboard connectors that come with the case up to the motherboard itself. Um, and this is going to be a little hard to see because of the small writing that's involved. Uh, but don't worry about it. It's usually everything will come with the motherboard itself and there'll be pictures and large diagrams so you can exact you can see exactly what you need to do but inside of your case there are a lot of little tiny connectors uh, and it, well I shouldn't say a lot there's usually like four or five 
uh, that will have a label. Um, the ones you're always going to see, you're going to see your power switch, your reset switch, uh, your power LEDs, and your hard drive LEDs. Uh, and these will get connected into this piece here. Um, there are also sometimes going to be USB ports, cables that you're going to plug into these ports for USB, uh, and sometimes USB 3. This case did something very odd with its USB 3 cable, where it becomes an actual USB cable that has to come out of the case and then back into the motherboard. It's really strange, but eh, I'll deal with that part later. Um, so, these small pins right now I've got the power switch I'm going to find the power switch label here and plug it in so that guy's there um, this is also color coded on this end so I can look in here easier and find where I've got to plug anything into and just plug it right in there um, hopefully the colors actually match up with everything actually I can see right now that they don't completely I'm not surprised because <laughs> these guys sit and manufacture the case and the board. They only manufactured one thing and they made their own color scheme. The reset switch is up front. And then the power LEDs. And for some strange reason, the case decided to separate the power LEDs. Uh, don't quite know why they went to that length. Uh, actually, I can see here why they did it, because some motherboards reverse the LEDs as far as which one's positive, which one's negative. In this case, it has to actually sit like this. Okay, so those cables are connected. Um, the next piece is the audio connector for the front panel audio. Um, usually now newer cases I've noticed have both HD audio and AC97. I was just plugging the HD audio into the case itself. Um, unfortunately right now I'm going to have to slide this in to make it work. So I'll get to that in a little bit because this, ca this cable only comes out so far. No big deal. And where's that USB cable? Ah, another funny thing this uh, case decided to do was instead of having two USB 2 ports on the front, which is pretty standard, it only has one. Um, so normally I'd have a con I'd have a full connector that connects right into this. Instead, I have a half a cable, um, and I'm only going to have use half the port to plug in. And that's all there is to it. It's uh, everything, well, this cable still has to go in, but I'll do that once I slide everything in place, um, which I guess I'll do now. Oh, there is more. What am I saying? We still gotta do power. I'll deal with that right now. So one of the things I almost forgot to plug into the power, or was the power supply, as far as the cables go, into the motherboard. Um, but I also have to, because this is modular, I have to plug the cable into the power supply at first, or it, the power supply itself first. So, and each end of these cables is marked. So this says ATX on it. The other sets, the other side said power supply on it. I'm gonna put this here for now. And there's the other cable, the CPU cable, uh, which in this case is marked power supply only on one end. Unfortunately, you can't see that quite so well what it's labeled as there, but take my word for it, it says it. And that's going to get plugged into CPU. And in my case, I uh, some motherboards have a 8-pin and some motherboards have a 4-pin. 12 volt cable. Mine has a four pin, so I only need one of these two, but it still has two of these anyway. I'm just going to leave that there, and then I'll see you on the flip side and we'll connect those in. Okay, so now we're going to connect the power ports up. 
So we've got the main power cable here, which goes into this large connector here. And um, uh, the connector is almost always going to be white or an off-white color. I don't think I've ever seen it a different color. And then the other power cable. I'm just going to pick one of these. Um, I'll grab the one that actually says CPU on it. Um, though I'm pretty sure it's not going to make a difference as, as to which one of these I choose. And we'll plug it right into there, into the port marked ATX12V. And once again, all these ports are going to be labeled on a large uh, picture inside of any motherboard installation guide that you get. So the last thing I saw to connect up was the audio. And I'll slide this in so that I can get it that better. And I'll move this over some. So that you can see the audio cable again and the audio port. And once again, using the HD audio and that goes into the audio port here and just verifying oops I would have plugged it in the wrong way a lot of times you can look at these pins and see that there's a missing pin here or a missing hole here uh, so you can align it with the missing pin that's there so I have to turn it this way pushing it a little further plugging it and just plugging it down right into the board until it's safe and secure uh, and at some point I can like wire manage these up to make it look a little prettier and not in the way like having this here this could wind up getting in the way of the fan for the CPU and causing problems so uh, you are going to want to tie these down someplace uh, into the case itself okay one of the last things that we need to do before turning this thing on because after we set everything up, close the case together. Uh, everything's pretty much done. The only thing we've got left to do is to power up the fans that came in the case. The case has three fans in it and each fan has a small peripheral uh, power cord that looks like this. It's uh, female on one side, male on the other. And in order to get power to it, we have to plug a cable into our modular power supply uh, here into the peripheral section and then we have these three female ports here that we can jack into onto the male side of the peripheral so sometimes it's a little finicky getting these in especially with the fan ones they're always not built the best but that one went in okay and then there are two back here I'm gonna plug into also Okay, now it's time for the moment of truth where I actually turn the computer on. Right now there's no hard drive in it, so it's not going to boot to anything. But for this, we don't really need a hard drive. We're mostly testing the power supply, the CPU, the RAM, and the motherboard along with the case connectors. Um, and with just that, we should be able to turn this on and get power to everything. Uh, I've connected, well, I disconnected my PlayStation 3 uh, and connected those connections, the power supply connector and the HDMI cable up to the motherboard on the computer. And I should just be able to hit the power button and hopefully get video and everything. This is the first time I'm doing it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> so far, nothing. That's not good. Oh. <laughs> Stupid me. I forgot to turn on the back switch for the back power supply. <laughs> By default, the power supply is going to be off, so you won't see anything at all um, until you do that. And we've got a signal going to the TV, and it says to, that it can't boot because there's no hard drive, which is completely fine. I could have thrown in a bootable USB stick or something just so I could have seen what would have happened, but that wasn't necessary for this test. I just want to make sure that everything got everything's turned on and everything's working, and it is, so yay.